Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Megan, and I'm so glad that you're here. Today's video is actually a homeschool room tour. It is a collaboration that is hosted by my sweet friend Anna over at Just Making It Work. If you don't know Anna already, you need to make sure that you subscribe to her. She has so much wisdom, you guys, and she is just the sweetest person in the world. So, there are lots of other mamas joining in this collab, so if you're looking for inspiration or ideas for organizing your space for homeschool, make sure to check out the playlist down below in the description. Now, although this is a homeschool room tour collaboration, mine is not actually a specific homeschool room. Now, um, when we first started out homeschooling, we lived in a really small condo. And when we sold our condo and moved here four years ago, I was so excited because I was finally gonna get to have a designated homeschool room. It was downstairs in our finished basement and it was what I thought to be perfect for a setup for our homeschool. So I spent a lot of time getting everything just right. I will even link our very first homeschool room tour down below. And I was so excited about it. And then it was about two weeks in of using that designated homeschool room that we began migrating back upstairs to where all the natural light was and actually to our family dining table. I don't know you guys, there's just something really special about gathering as a family around the table, not only for meals, but also to grow together in knowledge and in Christ. So, I'm going to show you how we have used this space to not only be our dining room and where we eat, um, but also obviously my little office area back there behind me um, and a little sitting area over here. So I'm going to show you how I have added designated space in here for our homeschool that doesn't look cluttered or anything like that because that was one of my concerns too. I wanted it to be a space that would blend in with the rest of our home and wouldn't look too schoolish, if that makes sense. So I'm gonna spin this camera around and show you. I have updated a few things since the last time just to make it have that more homey feel that I really want in our home. So here we go. All right, so this is our main little homeschooling hub area here, and it is located between the windows here. Um, so everything just kind of flows in here. I'll kind of pan around so you can get an idea of what the layout of the room is like. Now, originally, this area right here is where the design, oh, look, toddler graffiti. <laughs> See, it's real life here, guys. Um, originally this was supposed to be the dining area and we used it that way for quite a while. Um, but then we realized that our dining table is so much bigger than that space that it just worked better to move it into what should be a formal living room area and then use this as almost like a little seating area. This is where we have our morning time together. Um, our morning basket is here. And then, of course, the majority of our homeschool stuff is right here. So, I will kind of walk you through this area. Um, but I'm also going to turn really quickly. Um, so, this is kind of my little, like, office space here with my cluttered up desk. I didn't clean up everything for you guys. Um, and then, this right here is just some overflow of where I keep... Um, extra, well, this is what's left of the curriculum from this previous year that we are finishing up, but also any extra lot units and stuff like that for our Christian lot education. So that's what that is. And then this is Lily's preschool stuff up here. Okay, so we will start the tour here. Oh, first of all, okay, so I wanted some cork boards because I really want to be more intentional about hanging up some beautiful pictures my kids create or work that they did a really great job on or reminders or verses or whatever that we're working on just to be able to tack those up there. Um, this right here, I love this. Me and Sophia were out just kind of browsing around the other day and um, we found this at Big Lots and I just thought that was so cute. And it's that same minty color that's in my little homeschool cart here. 
So I just thought that that would be really sweet to put on the wall. And then this is kind of our family verse for this school year. I highlighted the things that it talks about within the verse that we are to exude as Christians toward each other. And um, just as a constant reminder for us throughout this school year. This is just some current books that we are using. So this globe, I actually ended up spray painting this globe because it was like a really bright blue color. And so I just had, I had some silver spray paint already in the garage. So I just went ahead and just spray painted it. And then I saw this in the spring or summer section of Hobby Lobby. It was like $2 on sale. I thought that would look cute there. Um, I like to keep our field guides and stuff handy for when we do nature study. We like to watch the birds out the window and things like that and identify them. So our field guides stay right here. Just some beginner reader books, things like the stapler and our hole punch and some nice art paper, which actually is supposed to go underneath, but it's there. And we always keep pencils in the most handy spot. Um, because that's the thing that is most used. Down here, we have this little container that has just some flashcards, um, Lily's little practice things of how to spell her name, months of the year, that kind of thing. And our scrunch maps are actually in here as well. We have a world scrunch map and then one of just the United States. And then our nice watercolor pencils, we keep those on here. Those get used quite a bit. Like I said, that paper is supposed to be right here too. I like to keep things like that handy because we do use them a lot and I don't like to keep those things put away. And then down here we have um, all the all about reading stuff. This is everything for the level two all about reading. This was just the best spot to keep it all together and have enough room to do so. This has our extra tiles and things like that. The board we do it on is actually tucked um, between the wall and the sofa so that the little ones don't get in it. Okay, so as far as the shelves, so um, if you um, are interested in what we are doing for curriculum, I'll also put a link to that playlist for the upcoming year's curriculum. If you're interested in that, I'll put it in the description as well. But this is how I organized it. So we are using my father's world. We are actually using the fourth family cycle, which is um, 1850 to modern times. In this basket, I have everything that we need um, as far as like CDs and books and read alouds. So this goes along with our curriculum. I always get the Story of the World audiobooks. I love having those for in the car. There's our Story of the World book along with a bunch of the read alouds for this My Father's World um, study. And then these are all of the reference books and things that we will be using for this as well as this one right here we will be using. So down here we have our IEW structure and style. Um, we also have a children's dictionary, like I showed you the Us Born book of world history to go along with story of the world. Um, this is the science that we will be using this year. This is Apologia, exploring creation with chemistry and physics. We also have our Handling Money God's Way curriculum right here. Um, also down here, we have our Squilt folder. We use Squilt Live as our music in our homeschool. If you're interested in that, I will also stick a link to a couple of videos that I have done on Squilt as well. And then this is our art um, from Masterbooks. We have a book about Beethoven who we will be studying this year. And then some of Lily's little books that keep her um, occupied. So she feels like she is very much a part of our school as well when we're sitting at the table together. Um, and then these are all the read alouds that we will or might get to besides what is already assigned. 
So I do have six children, four of them are actual school age. And so I want to provide some materials that go along with what we're studying, the era of history and stuff that we're studying. Um, I want to have them at the ready. And then also, like I said, some of these that may pique our interest to add in as read alouds this year, we will grab from this shelf as well. So that is that shelf. I almost forgot this one. This is where I kind of keep everything organized for myself and for everybody else. Um, this, of course, is our caddy with our scissors and um, just extra writing utensils, glue, extra staples, uh, push pins, things like that. And then this is a box that is full of just tons of crayons. And so we keep that there. And then on top, we have some of our Bible curriculum we, were, we will be using this year. Again, this is also on that curriculum playlist if you're interested in seeing what we're using for Bible. And then this is just my teacher's manual for our My Father's World. And then these are, I just bound their student sheets so that they can get their little bound almost like workbooks of the student sheets that go along with my father's world. So that is how this area is organized. Now over here, like I said, we start our morning with morning basket. We have our Old Testament books of the Bible. I always keep these in here as well as our truth and grace memory book, which is our catechism. This is, um, I shared in the video about Bible as well as this. This is what we're currently doing for Bible, and it is so, so good, you guys. This is one of the read-alouds that we have on the list for this summer that we haven't gotten to yet. This is my oldest son. He is reading this as one of his summer reading books, so I guess he put it in here. We are also keeping this in here. Um, just another little fun read-aloud for us to do. This right here, we have not started yet, but I am so excited about this. This is the cards that go with our Charlotte Mason Simple Spanish. Then I always keep this in here too. My kids love to just read poetry, especially Lily. She loves it. She grabs this a lot and asks me to read to her. So I like to keep it at the ready as well. And the stuff that's in our morning basket changes quite often. Um, this past year, I did make a playlist of what's in our morning basket. Uh, my hope is to be able to do that this year as well, to try to keep up with what's in our morning basket each month um, throughout this next school year. So that is our morning basket area. So over here, this is just a, a bookshelf with mostly mine and John's books. It's a little messy right now. But down here, I like to keep little board books and things like that for Noah and Lily to be able to grab when we're working at the table that's behind me. These we will probably use for co-op. Um, they usually have to have a binder. We used these this past year. Currently, it has their spelling in it, but I'm going to take the spelling out and bond it with my bonding machine and put it in their little latchmate boxes, which I will show you here in just a second. So, this is that bookshelf, and then as you come around, so that's the front door, as you come around here, we have this coat closet that we actually don't use for coats. We use it to organize our homeschool stuff. So it's a little bit messy right now. Um, this bag has some school supplies that I haven't put away yet. Um, but these latch mate boxes, I got these two or three years ago, I can't remember. We used them for a while and then ended up ditching them because we were using a bonder method for our organization. Well, now I have since moved back to them for the upcoming school year because we're not using binders and everything will fit in here and I think it's gonna work really well for us. So I'm just gonna stack them up and store them in here. I'll show you more about these in just a second, but first I'm gonna finish kind of showing what's in here. So this is actually our magnetic foam letters that we use for spelling practice. This is one of those you hang it on the door and my toddler slash preschooler can get little brushes of water. It's no mess, it's just water. And um, 
they can just paint away while we are doing school. So that is in here. They really enjoy that. You can also lay it on the floor too, but it's cool that you can put it on the door. Right here on this shelf, I have a basket with a handle that has our watercolors, which I, I need to clean these up from last year. We use them quite a bit. Um, we also have the perler beads and just some project paint back here. My kids love perler beads, by the way. Those melty beads, whatever you want to call them. This right here is a bag that has ink pads, but also some letter stamps. And that's another activity we use for spelling as well. It just makes spelling practice fun. Um, we also have markers in this container. This is all card games. It was just, this was a great way to organize all of our card games. This thing is from Ikea. My kids love card games, by the way. So, all of our cards are in here. Um, so, just makes it easier to grab out and choose what you want. And it keeps them from slipping around everywhere. So this is our busy bin box um, for my toddler slash preschooler with all of their little activities. I also have a video on that as well on how you can make busy bins and busy activities. Um, this shelf is overflow materials that we will be using for this year. Um, so these are all of my kids' book bags. We do go to a homeschool co-op on Mondays during the school year. So right now they're just kind of stacked up on the bottom, which is kind of messy, but at the same time, it doesn't bother me because this is really the only space we have for these. I don't want them in their bedrooms. So then we have, oh, and my laminator is down there. And then school supplies, you can't see it, but there's a box of school supplies down there. Okay, so these are puzzles. Then we have just some different games that these are the more educationally focused games that I try to keep up here. All of these, I love these, they're independent. So if I have a child that is in between finishing work and waiting on me to help them with it, they can grab one of these and work quietly. Um, and it's like logic games and stuff. So that is educational in itself. And then, of course, our Scrambled States of America game. And then up here on the top, this is a box of a bunch of different science um, add-ons add and manipulatives, so to speak. And then this is some extra math manipulatives that are not in their latchmate boxes. So I went through this and I pulled out the ones that would be appropriate for each kid and put them in the top of their latchmate. So I will show you what this looks like in here. So these latchmate boxes, oops, some of it fell out. So I just have her phonics cards in here. Some of these I can take out because she's already mastered the majority of them um, and she won't need all of them for next year um, and then she has a box of crayons in here and I guess she felt like she needed a ponytail holder um, <laughs> she also has little place value rod, um, rods and things like that she has a little Tom puzzle practice a little clock in here her little greater than and less than alligator as well as um, some little fake coins. And then she can take the top off and it has her um, independent studies in here. So her level one course books and handwriting and her little geography workbook and her math workbooks. So that is how I have organized their latch mate boxes for the upcoming school year. So we also have several bookshelves throughout the house. We have two bookshelves in the room behind me, which is our family room. We also have a big bookshelf downstairs with kids' books. And um, so anything that is in transition or that we're not using, we do have a shelf with more like reference top books that's underneath our TV stand in the other room. Um, and we keep those in there like our science related top books. Um, but for the most part, this is 
everything that we use on the daily for our homeschooling. Um, and this is how we have it organized in a way that doesn't impede on, I guess, the look of our home, so to speak. I feel like it still has a flow and fits in. If you don't have a room that is a designated homeschool room in your house, that is totally okay. You can incorporate it into your home and make it work for you and your family based on your needs. So if you have any questions, put them down in the comments below. Make sure that you check out the playlist and see how these other ladies have their homeschool organized as well so that you can get some ideas and glean from them. I hope that you enjoyed today's video and I hope to see you on future videos. Thanks so much guys and have a blessed day.